Masechus Bava Kama Dafayin Zayin Amud Beis. We start with the word Ve'azdu Leta'amayu. About ten lines from the top of the page. And the Shir's Lulun Yishmas of Emirim Menachem Ben Akiva Rus Bas Sholem Sol Bas Moshe Lerefu As Noch Lionel Ben Yuli Oriyah Yitzchak Tzvi Menes Tafuma Quick Avram Ben Yisroch Shachol Yisroel Shmuel Avram Ben Ben Yudis Bas Nechom Av Yisroch Shachol Yisroel Din Yamin Zeh Ben Natal The Azdu Leta'amayu <coughs> what did we say yesterday? Before we continue, before we start, let's summarize where we're holding. You tell me if a Ganev shechted an animal, and that animal was trefe. The animal was trefe, that means to say that maybe they didn't know about it, but the animal is missing uh, more than moon. It's more than moon. Trefe is worse than moon. It's not going to live for more than 12 months. It's missing half a brain or an entire lung or something. Yeah, some people miss half a brain, so this car misses half a brain. So, <laughs> so now you have a an animal, a car that's been whatever that's been shechted by the Ganev, and now the shechita was a kosher shechita, the mahadrin mina mahadrin was very good shechita. Okay, that was shechita. Now, but the animal you can't eat it. Why? Because it's less a trefa. Would the Ganev have to pay four or five or no? Shechita was kosher, but you cannot eat the animal. So Chachamim say the shechita is kosher, therefore that's considered to be a shechita that the Ganev would have to pay four and five. Four, I keep saying four and five, I don't have koach to, but you know what I mean. Now, however, Rabbi Shimon, what did Rabbi Shimon say? And he's been the star of the show for a good few days already. Rabbi Shimon says no. Rabbi Shimon says the shechita not only has to be kosher shechita, it has to be a shechita re'uya. It has to be shechita that actually makes me or helps me eat the meat. Like we spoke about the korban, like we spoke about other things, like about pidyan, kochim, bachutz. Therefore, if the trefe, if the animal was shechted, oh, mehadrin, mehadrin, the best shechet, but that's But the animal is treif because its body is treif. Then, according to Rabbi Shimon, the Ganev, if he did that, he does not pay four or five. That's Machlokas and the Rabbi Shimon. Absolutely so. That we've been through that a few times, and I'm happy that we're saying it again. According to Rabbi Shimon, it's not enough to have Shechita Ksheira, it has to be Shechita Reuya, Shechita that actually does the job. So even though there is a side reason why you can't eat it, but if you can't, the Shechita is not a good Shechita, and therefore, I mean, Shechita may be good, but the Shechita did not enable me to eat this animal. According to Rabbi Shimon, that's not good. Why? Because Rabbi Shimon learns a posuk about Joseph and his brothers. Are you familiar with the story? Joseph and his brothers? It's a little bit. Yeah, so then, Yosef HaTzadik, it says, Utvoyach Tevach Vehochen. Yeah, let's, Litvoyach. Tvoyach Tevach, to do the Tvicha to Shecht for the brothers, Vehochen, and prepare. Shechita has to be something that makes it prepared for you, kosher for you to eat. That is the Mechlokis Tanakam and Rabbi Shimon. They are Tanaim. And on top of that, I'll be with you soon. On top of that, there's a machlokes amoyroim between Rabbi Yochanan and Rashlakish within the words of Rabbi Shimon, which we ended off yesterday and we're going to do today. Yes. So the shkita was kosher. Yeah. <laughs> Says the Gemara. The azdu the tamayu the itmar. Our line starts with the word the itmar. It's more or less ten lines from the top of the page. The itmar azdu the tamayu. Ein Zayin Amud Beis, where we finished off yesterday. Yeah, we didn't do an Amudah. Ez, we're in Ez. Ez. Ez is one of the types, by the way, that Shechita applies to, right? Se could be of an Ez or a sheep. Yeah, is a goat or a sheep. The Itma. A moicher treifa ledivre Rabbi Shimon. Oh, a person sold a treifa, a live treifa, according to Rabbi Shimon. What does that mean? I took an animal that it's missing the entire leg from the top to the bottom, or an animal whom I, you know I saw in the CT it's missing a lung or missing the brains or something, and I sold it to my good friend, who's my best friend, Mackenzie, of course. Tim Mackenzie, he says, I'll buy it for cheap. I'm going to buy that animal. I'm going to make a steak for uh, Thanksgiving instead of turkey. Oh, yeah. So then I sold the trefa to someone, and I'm a Ghanav, Khalila. The Ganev sold the trefa. Sold! Didn't shecht. He sold the trefa to someone. According to Rabbi Shimon, would he have to pay four or five? What? Sold! Didn't shecht. 
So no, there's no. It's either or. You no, tell he, me either or. If he shechted according to Rabbi Shimon, he's not high four or five. The question is, yeah. The question is, if he sold it, who cares to sell? Selling is not shechting. So what? Rabbi Shimon said to Rabbi Shimon about shechting, not about selling. Oh, he remembers yesterday. His parents going to get a note. Rabbi Yochanan says not like you. Mechlokes Rabbi Yochanan Rosh Lakish. Very good. Rabbi Yochanan Amar Chayev. Rabbi Yochanan says yes. Ma Kesha. Rabbi Yochanan does not see an internal, intrinsic connection between Mechira and Shechita. He says no. Even though shechting and treif, you'd be potur, but selling the treif, you're Chayev. Tvocho and Mechoroi are two separate entities. They're not interconnected. Rosh Lakish Omar, what you say? Rosh Lakish Omar, potur. The Shlakish says, Potu. The Shlakish says, even if you sold the trade, not, no, not only if you shechted it, even if you sold it to Potu. Harvus, why? Says the Gemara. The Gemara explains everything. Rabbi Yochanan, Omar Chayev. Rabbi Yochanan, Nesir Chayev, on selling the trade for animal. Af al gav de leise betvicha. Even though, according to Rabbi Shimon, tvicha does not apply to the trade for animal, because even if you shechted it, but it's trade, you are Potu from four or five. He said, "Be mechira. Mechira is mechira. Tvicha is tvicha. Don't mix things up. They're two separate entities, each one with a personality of his own. There's mechira and there's tvicha. So even though this very animal tvicha would not apply to it, if, even if you were tovechit shoychetit, you won't have to pay for five. Mechira applies. Mechira, mechira, tvicha, tvicha. Don't mix the two. Two parallel lines." Says Rabbi Joe Kanan. Says Rabbi Yochanan. Shlakish Omar, Shlakish the Chiddush, Shlakish the Rufin, I stopped yesterday with a wow. Shlakish Omar, Potu. What does Shlakish say? Why does Shlakish say Potu? Came on the Leisei Betvicha, Leisei Bemechira. Since Tvicha doesn't apply to this very animal, so to Mechira, if you sold the tray for animal to whoever, the cow that's about to die or the sheep that's about to die, you sold it, would be a good sale, would be an honest sale. Still, mitzad gneva, you'd not be chayv to pay four or five. Why? Because yesterday we saw that Reish Lakish learns that pasuk tvochoy mechoroi. By the way, everyone learns it that way. The question is, how do they apply it? He learns tvochoy mechoroi means they're connected. Tvochoy oy mechoroi is like tvochoy u mechoroi. Yeah. In other words, they are interconnected. Yeah. They are shaykh to each other. And if mechira cannot apply, tzvicha cannot apply, and vice versa. Right? You always have to have at least potentially both roots open. And then you'd be high on one of them. But if one of the of the alternatives is blocked to begin with, then that's it. Then you're not even high on the other one. That's Rishlakish. Very good. So far, so good. Comes now the Gemara, ACVA. You can ask now questions. Actually, now is a good time. Weiter, weiter, weiter. Okay. Now Rabbi Yochanan is going to ask a question of Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. If you get the first two lines of the of the Brisa, and you have to just memorize it three times, then everything else will go very smoothly. Listen carefully to the words, and I'll repeat them at least once, and then everything will go smooth. That's instead of a chart. It's not. It's not a hard one. Gonav kilaim v'tovcha, comma. If you punctuate your Gemara, put a big <laughs> comma over there. Gonav kilaim utvocha. Let's say a person stole a kilaim. Kilaim doesn't mean your Yugo boss suit, which is a kilaim, kila or your uh, whatever, cherry tree. Gonav kilaim betovcha means he took an animal, stole an animal who's kilaim. Kilaim means it's not a pedigree, it's not, it's a, it's not a pure race, it's mixed breed of mule. what? Mule. No, well, mule doesn't apply to Gonavicho Mechira. So in this case, would only apply. Two, the only uh, meaning, the only species applies to, he, he, he stole the son or daughter of what? Of a sheep and a goat. A goat is from the family of the Izim, goats, yes. Goats and sheep are two completely separate, different animals, but Tvicho Mechira applies to both, right? When we say ox, we mean the entire family of oxen, and when we say sheep, we mean sheep or goats, or all those, yeah? Those kinds. So then... Let's say there is an animal who's a mixed breed of sheep and goats. Yeah, the father is a goat. Yeah, they they can have a kid together. The father, no South Africans don't like mixed marriages. <laughs> so then it was a black goat and a white sheep, even worse. Yeah, and then what? They had a baby, and now that baby is called Kilaim. 
we're going to learn later that kilaim, there's a lot of different halachas regarding kilaim. For example, you cannot bring kilaim to the mizbech. Right? Kilaim is not a, a pure, uh, it's not pedigree, and therefore the kilaim, you don't bring to the mizbech. Leave that now on the side for a minute. We're just translating the words. So Mr. Ganev, our good friend Mr. Ganevovsky, he stole kilaim, and he shechted the kilaim. Okay, that's number one. Second statement. Carefully listen to me. Trefa or, 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 he stole, he, he, excuse me, stole a trefa, he stole a cow or a sheep, or I don't care what, one of those, and it was trefa, yeah, it was missing a lung, I don't know, it's trefa, and he sold the trefa, I don't know when he knew about it, no, love Davka, could be he was missing an entire leg, love Shane when he knew about it, that does make a difference, love I said it's a trefa, so far we haven't seen a difference, he stole a trefa, Umechoro. Hear the second statement? You have to underline it. Gonav treifa umechoro. He stole the treifa and he sold the treifa. If you can see, when you talk about kilaim, we only opt for tvicha. And we talk about treifa, they're both like defective. They're both class B citizens. Okay? The treifa is mechoro. Treifa, he sold the treifa. Mishalem tashlim erboa Very interesting. We're being very selective here, right? Let's leave Kilaim alone for a minute. We'll go back to it. It's very interesting that this Bryce seems to be following what? We're saying that if you trefa, you sold the trefa, you have to pay four and five. Why didn't we say if you shechted or sold the trefa? Up until now, every time we spoke, we said tvicha mechira, tvicha mechira, tvicha mechira, tvicha mechira. So that means twins. All of a sudden, this Bryce seems to separate them. And the Bryce seems to very conveniently say, that if you sold the treifa, you have to pay four or five. Why don't we say that if you shechted the treifa, you have to pay? Because who's the author of this brisa that did not Rabbi say? Shimon. Rabbi Shimon. That's for sure. Rabbi Shimon is for sure the one who says, as opposed to Chachomim, that if you shecht treifa, you are potur. Only if you sold treifa, you are chayev. That's against Rishlakish. Because Shlakish says that according to Rab Shimon, since you cannot shecht it, can't mean you won't be chayev, so too you wouldn't sell it and be chayev. Yeah? And here we see just the opposite. We see that one omitting shechita in treifa is who is actually Rab Shimon. And he does say that if you sold it, you are chayev. Slap on the face of the opinion of Shlakish. Ay, 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 ay. Let the Gemara say the words. Reg the Gemara, my love, says Rabbi Yochanan to Rishlakish on the attack, Rabbi Shimani must be it's Rabbi Shimon, who is conveniently omitting and ignoring what? Shechting a treifa. That we all agree, everyone agrees, Mefurash, Rabbi Shimon says the Shechting treifa potter, and yet the same Rabbi Shimon does talk about selling that treifa. Ahem, Rishlakish. Alma, that is to say, Afal gav de leise betvicha, even though leise betvicha, tvicha does not apply to it because it's treifa, according to Rav Shimon, he say be mechira, mechira does apply to it, not like you saying Rav Shlakish, that they're close, that they happen, they're together, and everything happens to happen to them together. You see, mechira does apply to the one who's treifa, boom, again, Rav Shlakish. Question from Rabbi Yechonon. Good or bad? Yes? Right. However, true, everyone agrees that this is Rab Shimon who says that because the Shechita wouldn't apply to the Trefa, you wouldn't be Chayev. And yet, Mechira is now the question. If I sell the Trefa, I'm Chayev or not. That's a Mechloikas Rabbi Yechonon Shlakish. And here we seem to be saying, yes, look, it says, Meshalem, Teshnuvah, Bavach, Misha, Trefa, Mechoro. And that's not like Rish Lakish, understanding in Rab Shimon. You're right, but yeah, good, yeah. I'm with you. I don't think it makes a difference whether the Shech no, no, you're making a doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. Don't start with Svars. With all respect, you can say nice. It is no, I'm not making fun. I'm saying could be what you're saying is nice philosophically. At the end of the day, Rabbi Shimon says whenever you shechted the trefa, yeah, regardless of before, after, middle, you shechted the trefa, you put her on on shechita. You don't have to pay four and five. Mechira. That's a mechlokas rabbeinu shlakish. The Shlakish says whatever, whatever, so to speak, happens to Shechita would happen to speak to Mechira. If Shechita doesn't apply, Mechira doesn't apply. I know it doesn't make sense because Mechira doesn't make a difference. It says no. 
He says, Tvachoy Amechoy are Siamese twins. However, now in the Brisa, Rabbi Shlakish right now has to give a good answer, and he will. <laughs> before we continue, yeah, before we. Before we continue, I'll just say, regarding Kilaim, as we'll see later on, although we're very much in the middle of something, or just taking a side, a bit tangential, Rashi says, what's the Chiddush Shechayv on Kilaim? As I told you, Kilaim, usually when it says Se, or something like that, a name of an animal, like a Se or Shor, it means a pure one. For example, for Korbanos, for other things, which we'll see later on, for many other things, for Bechol, for this, for Meister, it's only pure. Things, yeah, those animals that are mixed breed, that those animals, many halachas don't apply to them, because of reason we'll see later. However, regarding Arba'a v'chamisha, it does apply to it. So, let's leave that on the side for a minute, okay? Later we'll go back to Kilai. Right now, in the middle of the storm here, in with Rabbi Yochanan, of how to understand the Sender Raisa. I would continue that, and after we get out of the storm, we can go back to Kilai. That's actually what the Gemara is going to do. Amalei, answers Rishlakish to Rabbi Yochanan, Lai, Rabbanan, uh-oh, I think it's Rabbanon. Who told you that this Brisa follows Rab Shimon? It's Rabbanon. Rabbanon obviously believed, you guys tell me, according to Rabbanon, if you shechted an animal and it's treif, are you high four or five? Yes, if you're Rabbanon of Rab Shimon. The shechita was good. We only care about the shechita. And Rabbanon, who say that the shechita applies to treifa, they also say that the mechira applies to treifa. The obvious question of Rabbi Yochanan now retorting back, I Rabbanon, so, according to Rabbanon, why are they missing half the information? Treifa b'mechira isa b'zveicha leisa, right? In other words, why is it b'mechira, yeah? Why, you, why, when you talk about treifa, you only mention mechira and not zvicha, which is shechita? Why are they missing that piece of information? Why is it in the second statement, treifa u'mechoro? They should have said treifa u'mechoro oi shechto, zovcho. Why are they missing the... Yeah, Tvicha or Mechira. They only mention Mechira. Very, very funny. Bishlam, according to Rabbi Shimon, of course you're missing Shechita, because you're not Chayv on Shechita. According to Rabbani, you're Chayv on both Shechita and Mechira. Why are they conveniently missing, all of a sudden, omitting the word Shechita? That's very, very funny. Detective, what's going on over here? Ve'elamai answers back Rish Lakish. Rabbi Shimon, Elamai, you want to tell me it's Rabbi Shimon? Well, any of these brises does make sense. Because according to Rabbi Shimon, the beginning of the Brisa is difficult. What did the beginning of the Brisa say? It says, Kilaim v'tovcho, right? You stole an animal which is mixed breed and you shechted it. If it's Rab Shimon, Kilaim v'tvicha isa v'mechira leisa. According to Rab Shimon, still the Brisa is funny. Even if you learn with Rab Shimon, the Brisa is still missing and only giving me one item per each, yeah? Very good, very good, Baruch. On each side we have one. For Kilaim, we have the Tvicha, and for Trefa, we have Mechira. So Ela must be, and that according to Rab the, the the beginning, does make sense. Rab Shim Rabbanon never argued on Kilaim. So it's still funny why Kilaim, you only picked one. So you say, Rab Shim, Rab Shimon. Even according to Rab Shimon, it's funny. Ela, therefore, Tan Ela, I'll tell you how the Bryce is read, says Rish Lakish, insisting. Tan Tvicha, Vuadin, Le Mechira, En Chinami. According to Rab Shimon, what do you say? He just picked one example out of two. You know, he didn't have koyach to write again and again and again. We picked Tvicha, and the same thing applies to Mechira. Emel Rabbanonami, Tan Mechira, Fuadin the Tvicha. I stick by my guns. Mr. Not Mr. Chas V'Shalom, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan, Irish, Lakish, Ema, I'm telling you, the Rabbanon also, the Tana speaks about Mechira, and it means Tvicha. In other words, Rabbanon, whether it's Rabbanon or Rabshimen, and I think it's Rabbanon and not Rabshimen, this Bryce is Rabbanon. And really, they picked Mechira here and Tvicha over there, just one example per each, because the Tana sometimes wants to talk shorter and not start giving you all the examples again and again. That's all. But really, the Bryce says Rabbanon, because according to Rab Shimon, I stick to my guns, that according to Rab Shimon, a Treifa, nothing would apply to. Not Tvicha and not even Mechira, says Rish Lakish in Rab Shimon's opinion. There, Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan answers, and he's going to have the final blow. Rabbi Yochanan is going to come up with a knockout now. Rabbi Yochanan Malacho, hi my, what's going on? Hi my, what's going on over here? What are you talking about? According to Rabbi Shimon, I can understand. I D since the Tana Treifa bechada, because by Treifa in the Seifa you can only talk about one, right? Because in Treifa, both you and I agree 
the treifa, you cannot have shechita. In the box of treifa, you can only take once. Which one? Only mechila. You force to it, right? Mimele tana kilaim bechada. Mimele the first part of kilaim. We want to maintain a consistent homogenic style to the Mishnah, to the Brisa, and Bakilaim also, we mention one out of two. Because in the Seifa, by Trefa, we can only mention one out of two. There is no choice, according to Rab Shimon. We can only talk about Mechira and not about Shechita. No Shechita by Trefa. Mimel at the beginning, we want to maintain the same style, so we spoke about one out of two. Says Rashi, why, why in the beginning we spoke about Tvicha? Because really, Tvicha is the one mentioned first in the Torah. Tov Choy but if you say it's Rabbanon, then why is this Raisa Bechlal divided to two? You want to maintain a nice style? I'll tell you how to write nicely. Look at the following option. According to Rabbanon, everything applies to everything. Mix them all up together and learn them all up together. Look at this. Gonav Kilaim Vetrefa. A person stole either Kilaim or Trefa. Let's put all class B together. Kilaim and Trefa. Tvachon Umechoron. You either sold them or you shechted them. And you pay four or five. Kasha. Boom. Bam. Kasha on Rish Lakish. Let's summarize. We see in the Brisa that the Seifa of the Brisa gave you one option. And that is what? We're talking about Trefa. And if you sold the Trefa, you have to pay four or five. Mashma. They were talking according to Rab Shimon. Because according to Rabbonon, according to Rabbonon, No. According to Rabbanon, even if you shechted it, you have four and five. Why is he only talking about selling and not shechting? Must be it's Rab Shimon. And yet you see, according to Rab Shimon, selling you are chayiv on. So not like you say, Rishlakish. We say that even according to Rab Shimon, the Tvicho Mechira are not really tied at the hip. And really, you can have Shechita alone. And even if you have cases where Shechita doesn't apply, such as Reifa, Mechira would apply. And that's what says Rabbi Yochanan. And of course, Allah is a as it always is, except for three cases. Yeah. Yeah. In your promise, it says only three times Allah is like a shlakish. Now, we're done with the Makhlukis of Shimon and the Rabbi Yochanan and the Shlakish. Now we're going to talk about Kilaim. Okay? Now came your time, Baruch. Now we're going to discuss Kilaim more. Says the Gemara, Kilaim, we are in the second to last narrow line. But the very end of the narrow lines here, Pregnant more Kilaim. Are you telling me that the person stole kilaim and shechted the kilaim? Yeah, a mixed breed of goat and sheep. Are you going to be chayv on that? Yeah, it's not simple. Se, siv. It says se. The word se is written in the Torah, right? Shol oy se, bochoy mechoroy. The Torah says se. Se is a sheep. The Omer Rove, and I know Rove says, I think in Chulin, Rove says, yeah, Chulin. The Omer Rove, listen. Zebono Av, Rav is learning a Pasuk, which we'll see later where. Rav is taking one Pasuk in the Torah, with Smashma, it says, Se Izim Oi Se Ksovim. Yeah, Ksovim. Vosim is Ksovim in the Torah, yeah? Which means, Se comes from Izim, to Izim. He and she goat, Oi Se Izim, or Kvosim. Or Se that come from Ram and a U. Ram and a sheep, only only a pure one. Zebono Av, what's the opinion of? A prototype to the entire Torah. The Torah speaks once, and that gives sheds light on the standard throughout the Torah. Kol mokoim, Rabbi. Kol mokoim. Shneema se eno elo lehoitzi asakilaim. Whenever it says se, comes to exclude and tell me kilaim doesn't apply in whichever halacha. So whenever the Torah says se, we may have exceptions later, but bagadol we see that whenever it says se in the Torah, it means a pure bread se. Yeah, pedigree set, both mother and father are either goats or either sheep. Yeah, both. Yeah, not a mix a mixture of both. And here we say, it says se. So why you have if you shechted the se, which is a mixed breed of the person, of the owner? Why you have on the shechita? Yes? I'm making the, the distinction between. Answers the Gemara. Shiny hocha. Here it's different. Yomar kro. The Pesach says, oi, oi, oi. Since it says, shor o se, oi meaning or, o-r. Oi, l'rabo se sakilayim. Since it says, shor o se, and the word o is redundant, because even if we, we if had we written shor ve se, 
which also understand it means show or you said that's been discussed before already. The word O oh is extra superfluous. It's there to tell me extra information to include and bring another item to the story, and that is kilaim, kilaim of the sheep and the goat. Rag the Gemara, is that so? That's interesting. The chol oi le rabbisu. You want to tell me every time the Torah says O, oh, the word O, oh, which sometimes is extra, the word or, either or, it's always coming to include and bring more items to the list. Is that so? Gatanya, I'll show you a bride. So that says just the opposite. It says, and here this is a pasuk. I'm reading the pasuk here on the side. It says, Shor oi kesev oi ez ki yivoled. The Torah says in Vayikro Chavbeis, it says Shor oi kesev. Shor is a bull, kesev is a sheep, or ez, or goat. Kesev is instead of keves, I told you. Yeah, kesev is keves. Many times in the Torah, it's a sheep. Instead of keves, it's kesev. Many times. Shor oi kesev oi ez. Kivoled, once born, you have to wait seven days. Yeah, you can't bring a Corban when it's too young. Only after seven days, from the eighth day onward, you can bring it as a Corban. Okay, so these are the animals that are kosher for Corban. And by the way, it's true, obviously it's true, the Torah says so. The only three species that are kosher for Corban are Shor, Ke- Shor and its family, Kesev, Keves, the sheep and the family, and goats and family. These are the three types. And it says Shor Oi Kesev, O Ez. Shor O Kesev, O Ez. Two O's, okay. And you know what it says over there? Prat lekilaim. Oh, prat lekilaim. Excluding kilaim. Now is your big moment, Moshe. Here it says, which animal is excluded, which species is excluded from kilaim, <laughs> from korban? Kilaim. Kilaim cannot be brought as a korban. Oh, excuse me. And it says, oh, hmm. There the word oh is not coming to include, it's coming to exclude. Very interesting. So that's really funny. The Torah seems to be not consistent. The Chayra. By us, you tell me that oi means what? To include and bring in, no questions for the next two minutes. Oi means to include not only show the kesev, also kilaim. And thereby korban, the same word o oh, is coming to exclude them from korban. So make up your mind. Is the word o, oh, which may be redundant for drosha, is it exclusive or inclusive? What's the story? Let's continue now. No questions for the next two minutes. Oi is, and continues the Torah to, we read the Torah onwards. And the third item on the list of the korbonus that can only be brought on the eighth day, oi ez, or a goat, prat le nidme. What's a nidme? Nidme is, you have a pure white family and there's a black child being born. Oh, scandal. Yeah, in other words, sometimes you have an animal that does not look like neither daddy nor mommy. Ahem, ahem, ahem. Yeah, you have a father and a mother, the goat and a goat, a uh, goat and uh, the she-goat, how's it called? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, let's say the ram and the sheep. The ram and the you, the ram and the sheep. And they have a kid who looks like an ibex. It looks uh, different. So nidme is like dome, different. It's not identical. It's like, looks like us and not exactly like us. So that kind of animal is also possible from Corban. In any event, let's leave Mr. Uh, Doime alone. The question is, as we said before, how do you figure out the word oi? Is it including or excluding? Omar Rove, Rove bring, gives us a brilliant logical answer, like the entire Gemara. Omar Rove, which means each time you have to look at the context of the Pasuk. The word oi is not a magic formula. The word oi always comes to tell you that that you wouldn't have known. Always comes to tell you a Chiddush against what you would have said, which means, the Gemara is going to explain everything. Over here, Gabi Gneva, Dichtiv, Shor, Oi, Se. What are the only two species that are mentioned here by Gneva? Only Shor, Oi, Se. You steal a Chamor, obviously Shechita doesn't apply. Even if Shechita is a kosher animal, not Chayim. Only Shor and Se, and that's it. Only two types. Shor, Oi, Se. Now, Se may also include an Ez. True. But Se, the only ones mentioned are Shor, Oi, Se. She'i ato yochel oitzi kilay mi b'neim. If you want to make a Shidach, you want to make a Shidach, between Shor and Se, then they can't make they can't start a family together. Maybe in 2022 they'd be allowed to, <laughs> but Lamaisa, they can't have a child together. Yeah, a Shor and a Se, a bull and a and a goat, even if they are with each other together, friendly, but they're she won't be pregnant. Says Rashi why? Interesting why. Says Rashi, because the time of pregnancy is not the same. Because the Beima Gasa, the cow is lahavdil, like human beings, is nine months, the pregnancy, and the daka is five months. That's the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah. 
Yeah, the 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 beima daka. That's what it's called. The sheep or the goat. Really? Seriously? I never knew that. Yeah. Really? Okay, fine. So then, says the Torah like this. When we talk about show and say, Kilaim is out of the radar. I don't read Kilaim, but show and say, he's big, she's small, what's the story? Oi, Lerabos Kilaim. The Torah always comes to tell me against what I would have thought. Otherwise, why do I need the Torah? Comes to tell me, oi, to include Kilaim, which means, Moshe, the natural, so to speak, spontaneous reading of the Torah would say, show, say, hmm, I'm reading the Torah, show, say, and my imagination starts going, what would be Kilaim? Nah, there's no Kilaim, but show and say, no such things. Times the Torah tells you, surprise, I'm the Torah, I'm telling you against what you thought, oi, to include Kilaim, but Gabi Kochim, on the other, the other post you keep bringing me from over there, where there are three items, and the last two items are Kesovi Moizim, sheep or goat, the Chtiv Kesev Ve'ez, Shata Yochelot Sikilami Beneim. Yes, you can have nice marriage and start a family between a goat and a sheep, that you can. And I would say, okay, wait, the Torah, let's read the Torah. It says in the Torah Kesev Ve'ez, I would say, well, Kilaim w- would apply. Comes oy lemayet. It's a big story about how to learn Torah. Oy comes to exclude what you would have thought. The Torah. Many times people ask, you know, the questions. You know, the Torah says doesn't make sense to me. The Torah doesn't sit with my values. Thank you very much. That's what the Torah is all about. The Torah is written by Hashem, not by you. <laughs> we have our own understanding. The Torah comes to be mechadish against what we thought, not to go along with us, but to, to be mechadish a whole new idea. That's what we're learning over here. Oy here comes to include as opposed to what you would think what you would have thought by Shovese. And there when it says Shor and Ke- it says Kesev Ez that are friendly and can have a baby together, comes the Torah says, uh oh <laughs> the word oh is like in English, uh oh <laughs> against what you thought. Oi over there, exclude Kilaim and as Moshe said at the end of the day you should be happy. And Khinami. So far you are on the winning side. When it comes to Carbonos, then Enochinami the Kilaim is excluded. Oi excludes Kilaim, the Shenken by Shechting the animal that you stole from someone, then we say Oi excludes, excuse me, I got made a mistake, it includes the Kilaim, and even if you Shechted Kilaim that you stole, the rabbi of the Ganev should tell him, no, 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 you're going to be Chayev if you Shechted the Kilaim. So far, so good. Yeah? Now, Frek de Gemara, Ein Chesomod Aleph, I'm listening, yeah? <coughs> Sorry. You start a mule. A mule oh, you know, oh, but Shavas everything applies to exactly. all the items. And even though the animal came about by a city, still, uh, the animal. Frek the Gemara. Frek the Gemara. We are in Chesam with Aleph. Frek the Gemara. Who Veha Gabi Kochim Nami Nemer Shor Oy Kesev. Ah, wait a second. You're conveniently ignoring one word about Kochim. What did you say about Kochim? Because by Kochim it says Kesev Oez, and Kesev Oez together can make a nice family. Comes the Torah, Oi, to exclude. Hey, excuse me, are you erasing half a pasuk? Um, um, um. It says Shor Oi Kesev Oez. And Shor cannot marry, so to speak, can't have a child with either of the other ones. Kochim Nami, Ein Chesem Odal, top of the page. Kochim, it also says Shor Oi Kesev, She'en Eto Yochel Otzikilami Beinayim, Aha, uh-huh. if so, right? Venirbi, why don't we say when I started reading the Pasuk, I saw Shor Oy Kesev, they cannot have a child together, and maybe the word Oy that applies there comes really to tell me to include Kilaim. We always go against the logic, against the simple reading. The simple reading is Shor Oy Kesev, that's the first words, right? I would stop there, Shor Oy Kesev. I, with my big Chochma thing, ah, Shor Kesev, no Kilaim comes oi to include kilaim. Ah, so maybe kilaim is allowed to go to the Mizbeach, because the first oi, it should include them by your logic. And so the Gemara, no. With the Seifa Lemayet, Reisha Nami Lemayet. Since the Seifa is coming to exclude, and you agree to me that the Seifa of course excludes, because by the Seifa it says, Kesev Oy Ez, right? Kesev Oy Ez comes to exclude. Kesev Oy Ez, naturally I would say, are good together. 
or is coming to exclude. Reishanami lemayet. So to the Reisha comes to exclude. Now, you may ask, why do we say twice oi oi? That we know already. Why? One comes to exclude the kilayim, and one of them comes to exclude the nidme. What's nidme? Nidme is not as bad as kilayim. Nidme is really a pure child. It's not a mamzer. Yeah, don't think that way. Yeah, they're good. They're good. They're good. <laughs> good boys. Good boy. Good girl. The goat and the she goat happens to be recessive gene. Something happened in the genes. Yeah, something like that. Like uh, yeah, there's a thing called uh, no, I don't remember the name. What? Yeah, it's a mutant. Oh, mutant variant. And that mutant summer came up, and it's a nidme. The animal's nidme. It's really the son of those two, but it looks like something else. So that's also excluded. I would say just the other way around. I would say the other way. Why are you reading the postdoc that way? I would tell you like this. Shoroi Kesev Oi comes to include the Kilaim because Shoroi Kesev can't have children. So I would say, no, I would say Kilaim is excluded. Hamza Torah Oi to include them. And the other Oi consistently should also be Merabe. I would include Kilaim and include Nitme. Everything should be, yes, included. Dog the Gemara, hi Mai. Hi Mai is like Mafitom. What's going on over here? If you say that Oi and Oi both come to exclude who? Exclude Kilaim and exclude Nidme. I don't have to translate all the time, right? Oi Kilaim, the mixed one, or Oi, the funny looking one, the one who looks like the neighbor. Bishlamamait, who? The Itzrich Trey Miuti. Then they both look like <laughs> you need both Miutim. You need to exclude the kilaim and exclude the nidme. Why? The Africa of the imat kilaim, even though the Torah already excluded kilaim, eh, stop right there. I wouldn't naturally know, automatically know that nidme is also a problem. It's lichlemuti nidme. Nidme is not as bad as kilaim. Kilaim is really kilaim. Kilaim is really for mixed breed. That's worse. It's not really a pure kesev. The Torah says, bring a keves. Don't bring me half half. Yeah, I want a keves. But Nidme is really a canvas. He happens to look like that. It's a Purim custom all his life. So therefore, I need another mute. Not only Kilaim is bad, even Nidme, which is not so bad, is also excluded. But if you're telling me that the word Oi comes to include both, then why do you have to include Kilaim and then include the Nidme? Hashta Kilaim. If Kilaim, which is a really bad boy, the Kilaim, which is Be'etzem, really not part of the story because it's not pure, and yet you include it, which is, that's what you're suggesting. Nidme, mi bai. Really, Nidme, I have to say, of course Nidme is good. Nidme is a good boy. We took him to a genetic test, DNA, DNA test, and he's really a pure goat. He has the looks of uh, Ibex. I don't know why. Ask Hashem. So Lomai say, if that's included, of course the other one is included. If Kilaim is good, of course Nidme, which is not so bad, of course it's good. Therefore, one minute, therefore, so far, so good. Let's not get confused. We come, we came and established very nicely. When we talk about Geneva and shechting the Kilaim, for sure, the Nidme, that's not even a question. You shecht the Kilaim, you are Chayev. Why? Because the word Oi comes to include Kilaim. Why? Because the Torah says, Shor Oi Keves, right? Shor O Keves, Shor Se, excuse me. Shor O Se, Naturally, there's no kilaim in the They can't have a child together, right? Even with all the craze, can't have a child. Shor oise. Therefore, I would say, no, child uh, kilaim mixed spirit is not included. I'm the Torah. Oh, yes, it's included. Oi, 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 you're wrong. Oi, 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 you're wrong. And yes, kilaim is included. And if you shechted kilaim, Mr. Ganev, the, rov, the, the Ganev's rabbi should tell him, if you shecht it, you're high four or five. Shaken by... Yeah, Nidme for Kol Sheken. Nidme is not as bad as Kilaim, all the more so. And when it comes to Kochim, as you kept saying, the temple, the base of Mikdash, then what do we say? Kilaim out. The Koyanim should check, make sure. Yeah, make sure. Yeah, you stand there by the reception in base of Mikdash. You have to check if it's Kilaim, if it looks funny, if it's not purely bred, not pedigree, out. Why? Because there, because it says Kesevoy Ez, Kesevoy Ez is is yes Kilaim. Time to toy with the oi? No, kilaim. Ah, what about show? That's nidme, and that's kilaim. Kilaim is excluded, and nidme is also excluded. Nobody here is a mamzer, by the way. But there, nobody's a mamzer. But animals, there's no marriage, anyways. But I'm saying, no, no, I'm not making fun. I'm saying 
as and and say in the name is possible. As and says possible to the mizbeach. Kilaim is possible to the mizbeach. And nidma is not a mamzer. Nidma is one that's really born pure, and uh, there's a recessive gene that uh, came by. I don't know if it was Altezay the Sama came about. He looked. Yeah, I'm listening. Now, okay. Now, Frek the Gemore, Ella, the word starts with Mibaya. We're getting near the middle of Einches and Modalef. Ella, Frek the Gemore, Hod the Omer Rove, Rove did tell me, Ze Bono Av. What's Bono Av? Here we have a general rule that applies to Kolot or Kula, Kol Mokim Shneemar Se, Eino Ella Lohitzi Esakil Aim. Yet yeah, Rava tells me a big rule, a big mega rule. Whenever the Torah says se, the word se comes to exclude kilaim. Frankly, tomorrow, what's Rava's big statement really coming to tell me? Lamai hilchasa. Exactly what's Rava coming to tell me? Because Rava says that when you say binyan av, by the way, before we continue, before we continue, when we have a big rule, that is to say, the Torah doesn't have to repeat it again and again. Right? We all know that. Yeah? When we say binyan av, it means that the Torah says it once, and from that one time, we have the rule that applies every day. Right? We all know that the shear starts 9.20, so we don't have to say it every day 9.20. We know it's 9.20, for example, yeah? But we have to say tomorrow in Zion, afterwards in Ches. The general rule doesn't have to repeat itself. So now, the Rebbe wanted to tell me that there's a general rule that's learned from one time that the Torah says, say ksovim, say izim, say pure ksovim, or say pure izim. From now on, Go along with the same rule. Se always means pure. Frag the Gemara. Is that so? We're beginning to shed it out over here. We've seen two cases, and Rova's statement doesn't look to be very lucky. Why? If you're talking about Kochim, then you're right. You're right. Kochim Kilaim is excluded. However, show a case of Patle Kilaim. If you're telling me there's a general rule, no. You see that the Torah had to make an extra special word in the Parsha of Kochim to tell me, oh, excluding Kilaim. Mashma, you don't have that magic mega blanket rule. If I would tell you, people, uh, tomorrow, let, imagine yourself tomorrow, today, at the end of this year, I'll tell you, tomorrow, a new thing, news, everyone has to know, a new thing. Tomorrow we're learning Bavikama, 920 in Avat Shalom. You think I'm really crazy. I hope you don't think I'm crazy anyways. What, what's the Kiddush? What do you, tomorrow, a special thing. What did you think? We're learning in the Gro Kabbalah, 10 o'clock at night. What's the Kiddush? Why does the Torah have to tell me? Special halacha, bekochim, oy, 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 with all limut. You said it's a general rule. It doesn't look like general. Looks like kochim specifically had to mention it. Elam So now we're starting to bring more halachas. Maybe from Iser. Well, Maisel Behema, not the Maisel you have to take from your grapes or your pomegranate, but the Maisel Behema, everybody knows, right? Like we learned in Rosh Hashanah, Maisel, the tenth animal, goes to Hashem. It's Kochim Kalim, and the Bailim eats it. The Maisel, okay, Maisel, really, Kilayim cannot be Maisel. Let's say you take Maisel out of your, what's its name, of the of the pen, of the where the animals are. The Kilayim are not part of the Maisel, which means when you take Maisel from the animals, make sure the Kilayim are out. Okay? However, we don't learn, it's true what Rava says, that Maisel Kilaim doesn't apply to Maisel, or Maisel doesn't apply to Kilaim, but then we learn a different Rosha. We learn it, Tachas, Tachas, Yolif, Mikochim. It says by the animal, Shivas Yomim Ye Tachas Imoy, under its mother, when it's a baby, and by Maisel it says, Tachas Hashevet. Everybody knows the Rosh Hashanah, under the staff. Under the whip, every tenth animal gets a whip, right? So the tachas, tachas is gzer shava to tell me that just like kodshim don't have kilaim, so to meiser doesn't have kilaim. Mm, bad news. So it's not like I have a general rule. We needed a special gzer shava to tell me that meiser is not kilaim. Not like Rava says, it's just a general rule. Ile b'cho, we're trying harder. Maybe b'cho. Let's say b'cho. What is a b'cho? Let's say b'cho was born an animal b'cho, and the animal b'cho is kilaim. It's the first baby of that mixed-up family. Would you bring it as a korban to Hashem? No? Very good. Now, Lebchor over here, look at Rashi. Rashi says, also, you see, one second. Lebchor, Havoro, Havoro, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Havoro, Havoro, Yolif Mi Maiser. The word, yeah, Lehavoro, Lehavir, is mentioned, 
it says Yavor about Meiser, and also by Bchor it says Vahavarta called Peter Echem La Hashem, right? And No, 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 no. That's later. Peter Chamo is later. Not yet, not yet, not yet. We'll learn it from Meiser. Yeah? The Meiser, we'll learn it from Meiser. So we see that the Bchor is excluded, Kilaim is excluded from Bchor, you know, it's from Meiser, not from Rava's rule. So again, we see the Rava seems to be right, but it's not like I have one general rule that tells me everything. Each parsha has its own uh, specific to tell me to exclude Kilaim. Not that there's a general rule about Kilaim. Inami, Nidme Amata, or Inami, and also Nidme Amata Loi, Dichtiv Ach Bchor Sho, I'll stop over here. That Inami, I remember, that's more or less where I stop. Let's stop here. I know it's bang in the middle, but I would stop over here, and we'll continue tomorrow. We're in the middle of the question about Rava. What did Rava mean when he said there's a Binyan Av to teach me that Kilaim is not the name of the game? As we already saw many specific halachas that exclude Kilaim. So why do we need Rava's general Binyan Av? Thank you very much. Tizku Lamitzvos. Bye. Have a good day.